Hey guys, welcome back once again to another tutorial video on how to make your own Arduino based Proton Pack lights and sound. This is the fifth video in this series, I believe. And in this video, we're going to wire up the Neutrona wand lights. It's very easy, very similar to the cyclotron lights that we did in the previous video. So this video is going to be a little bit shorter, or maybe not shorter, but it's going to be broken up into a little bit, or a, a, a combination of, of several different things, because it's not gonna take me the entire time to show you how to uh, solder the uh, wand lights. And because I've already shown you how to do the cyclotron and the power cell lights, you already know how to solder. So this part should be super easy. So the difference in the wand lights and the uh, cyclotron and power cell lights is that they're all just single NeoPixels. Actually, let me grab one really quick. So if you can see, it's probably hard to see. This is a single NeoPixel. It's one tiny little light. And it um, is what you uh, solder into a, like a, a chain to create the wand lights. And there are four lights in the in filter for the uh, proton pack venting and then there are six more lights that go inside the wand and then one more neopixel which is um, gonna be a neopixel jewel that is at the very end that goes in the clear acrylic tube um, that's the sort of the uh, the barrel I guess the the tip um, the make them hard as it were uh, of the thrower so basically they're all in one long chain so all you have to do is solder them together exactly the same way you did the cyclotron lights so I'm not going to show you um, the process of me soldering every single one of those because it's super self-explanatory so we're going to look at the diagram and then I'm going to show you how to solder one of them because the um, the lights themselves are really small so they're kind of tricky to solder but the connections are exactly the same as they are on uh, the jewels so once you can do one of them you should be able to do all of them the other thing that you probably need to remember when you're doing this is if you've already um, if you already have a thrower if you're gonna use a 3d printed wand or you're gonna use a bin of camp kit or you're gonna use any of the other resin or um, throw in chicken whatever the case is when you when you go to build out your lights for this and you start to wire things up you're gonna make you need to make sure that you measure the wires so that you have enough room to run them to all of the different locations in the wand so you you will have the the furthest light that's in the tip that's got to go all the way to the tip and it has to it has to go um, underneath the grip the hand grip um, so there has to be enough length of wire for that as well as the hat lights um, the vent light inside of the main body and the red slow blow light and there might be one more um, but if you're a Ghostbusters fan like me and you're building a proton pack then you know where all those lights are um, and you know you can just look inside the body of your wand and uh, see how much space you have and just cut your wires accordingly I'm not going to show you that either because it's pretty self-explanatory. We still we did the exact same thing for the cyclotron lights. The the wires are just going to be shorter. Um, if you're using the stranded wires, like I suggest at the very beginning of this tutorial, um, you should have no problems uh, with that. You might have to make some of them shorter or longer depending on the distance that they need to travel inside the wand. But it's a super simple. Um, the biggest struggle with this is going to be just getting them to fit inside the body because there's not a lot of space to work with. So you may end up needing to trim them shorter and resolder them together and use some shrink uh, and some heat shrink tubing to um, put those wires back together if you have to end up cutting them shorter. 
Uh, we've already got the cyclotron lights and the power cell um, wired up. That's what we did in the last video. And I want to show you guys step by step on how to do all of this stuff. But to be honest with you, there's a lot of stuff in here that's going to be just kind of looking at a wiring diagram and uh, just soldering. So the, uh, the wand lights are actually even easier than the cyclotron lights once you know how to solder. Okay, here right there. Once you know how to solder, you can pretty much do all of these. And what I'm going to do in this video, instead of showing you every single, I'm not going to solder every single one of these lights for you guys, because I think now that you know how to do the cyclotron lights, you should be able to figure out uh, how to do these. Um, I'll have the wiring diagram. I will show where all how all the lights connect, but it's really just one long chain of these single um, neopixels, as you can see right there. They're really small ones, and then on the back, it's just like the um, the cyclotron lights. There's an in, an out, and a ground and the five volts. So it's, it's literally exactly the same. They're just really small. So they're a little tricky to solder. So that's why I'm gonna show you how to solder one so that you can get the hang of it. Um, but I don't wanna bore you by soldering every single one of these because this is gonna take a long time to do. Um, and then at the end, the very end of it, I have a Neo, another NeoPixel jewel as you can see again, there's the end, there's the uh, the power and the ground. And you can see how terrible my soldering job is. So if you, I can do it, you can do it. Um, and then uh, I've cut the wires. You can see. There's another one. The floor is kind of dirty. Is that a spider? No. Okay. Um, there's. It's just a long line. And basically all I've done is put a length of wire in between them that I think is going to be long enough to um, fit inside the body of the wand. Um, I may actually have to end up making some of these shorter, but this is stranded wire, so at least I can bend it around. And um, So I just eyeballed it. You don't have to, to get too complicated with it. Just make sure that it's long enough to reach from each pot, spot that it's going to go in. And the wand, you may need to just look inside the body of the wand to see. Um, and these are the uh, vent lights, so I, I put those in such a way that uh, they will uh, fit inside the end filter. And then there's a, there's a holder that you can print that will hold these, uh, these little lights inside of the end filter. And I'll show you all of that whenever we start to install this in the pack. Um, so since this is one just continuous strand of you know pixel lights, I thought it would be redundant for me to go in and literally solder every single one of these because they're literally in a line, you know. So this this is probably the easiest part in terms of where things go, but more difficult because of just how small they are. So you just need to take your time. Um, I will show you how to do the first one and then I'll show you the diagram so that you can um, know which ones go in which order. Um, there's not really an order to it because they're all the same. You just make sure that you connect them so that you have the length of wire in between each one so that you know. And you can actually look and I'll actually um, put a list in the description of the order of the lights so that you can tell how much wire to put in between them because that is important you need to know which lights are going to be which because uh, otherwise you won't know how long to make the wires and I just gave myself a little extra because I feel like that would be better than um, having too little and I might end up changing this NeoPixel out because and you're gonna probably find this out as well. Um, this is the uh, the firing uh, 
for the for the acrylic tube this is the light that basically when you hit the fire button this is the light that comes on it looks really awesome it's really bright the only problem is is that because of the size of this it doesn't fit inside the barrel of the wand and uh, a lot of people were having issues with that and they had talked about how they've they've sanded down the sides but i don't really think i can do that without damaging the uh the light um when i did this in the past i actually used just another one of these single neopixels it wasn't quite as bright but it worked all right um, I don't know if I'm going to do that with this. I really like how bright this is, so I'm going to see what the options are. Okay, let's take a look at this very advanced wiring diagram that I have drawn up using the highest technology possible, Microsoft Paint. Um, so basically, what you've got here is you have your four vent lights that are going to go inside the end filter those are connected to your six lights that are going to be inside the wand which are going to be your hat lights your slow blow light uh, and so forth and then those connect to a single jewel neopixel um, which is going to be the acrylic the clear acrylic uh, tip on the front of your wand that's where that light goes now these lights here um, these all do something different um, I if you look at the code it can it'll tell you which is which um, but just to be on the safe side I would just make sure that you leave enough space in terms of wire in between these so that uh, you have enough room to run the lights to where they need to go in the wand and the best way to do that is just to look inside the body of your wand and just see how physically far the wire the light needs to travel in order to make sure that you have enough wire so I guess what I'm saying is don't wire it like this so don't use really short wires I just did that for example purposes so that you can see how they connect but you need to make these wires as long as they need to be to reach the different spots uh, that they need to go in the wand so you know if you have this one uh, these this uh, jewel in the front tip of your wand you know that the wires have to travel down the barrel under the grip um, and so forth so you need to make sure that you have enough length to do that you can do that by doing the same thing I did for the cyclotron lights which is just using um, the wire to measure how far it's going to go before you cut the wire um, so like I said in the intro, I'm not going to show you how to solder every single one of these because they're going to all be the same. Um, you can see that you have your ends, your digital ends and your digital outs on all of these and they pretty much connect to each other um, like so. And then you have your in coming from the NeoPixel uh, jewel to the out on this guy here. Um, so basically just go ahead and wire these up exactly like this is pictured. Um, I also included a note here. Um, the original wiring diagram that Mike uh, made for his code uh, suggests and or recommends that you use a capacitor and a resistor um, as part of this configuration you can look at his wiring diagram to see where the capacitor and resistor are located so if you want to add those to it you can um, I currently don't have them wired up to mine simply because I was trying to keep this as simplified as possible and I know that it's to reduce noise so I wanted to see if I even had any noise before I added extra stuff um, I'm sure there's a reason why he suggests it, so I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, and I'm not saying it's wrong nor right. I'm just saying that I didn't do it. Um, so far, I haven't run into any issues with that. Um, I think it's more just a you might as you know better to do it than not do it. So I might end up adding them later, but for right now, I wanted to keep this simple. So we're gonna go with this simple wiring. So if you look at the way he has. His wiring um, laid out is going to be slightly different than this because I was trying to take the simplest possible route. Um, so with all of that being said, um, 
make sure that you just keep looking at this diagram as you solder. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to solder one of these really small LEDs because they're kind of tricky to solder. So as promised, I'm going to show you how to solder one of these really tiny uh, single Neo pixels. Uh, you'll see that they're exactly the same as the uh, joules. There's a 5 volt uh, plus uh, on this side um, and then there's the ins and the outs in the center and then there's a minus on this far side which indicates that that is the ground side and then on where it says 5 volts which you probably can't see it there's an arrow pointing this way um, letting me know that that is the in and the out so basically what you're going to do is just attach your wires to these pads they're really small um, and it's going to be difficult to see I don't even know if I can get it any closer than that maybe you can see that but yeah so the trick is going to be to solder this and we're going to use our um, helping hands I'm going to be careful not to uh, clamp anything important. There's a little bit of a tiny edge on there. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to click this like so. And I'm going to just do one side of these. You're going to do um, both sides when you do it. But for the sake of, of this video and keeping it kind of short, I'm going to do just one side. So I just need some wire. I thought I had already cut these, but I guess not. So I'm just going to cut just a really tiny because I don't want to waste my wire. I'm just gonna do you would need a lot longer of a piece of wire than this. But this is what I'm gonna use. So it's just a tiny piece there. And since I've been doing the uh, red, black, and yellow scheme, I'm gonna use yeah, so these over here. Then of course you know by now that you need to strip the wire. These are so small you need very little. So something like that. See how tiny that is? Something like that is fine. Just a really small bit of it that might have been too much but it'll still work and then the last one like so so I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit closer for the saw actual soldering so we're nice and zoomed in now so we're gonna just gonna do first we're gonna do the five volts since it's on that side I'm going to just adjust that. I'm probably going to burn myself. got to be careful. You should always be careful. Safety first, my friends. So this is exactly the same way as you were doing this before. I'm just going to line these up. Adjust it as much as you need to. close, very close, right there. These are really small, so you have to be really careful. Then you're going to take your solder. I only have a little bit of solder left, so you're just going to, hopefully you can see this, very carefully. Just solder it, just like that just like the Neo Pixels. And there we are, that one's on. So make sure that your connections are secure. Don't don't uh, leave them if they're not secure. Yeah, you can always redo it if you need to. So then the this next one is gonna be the in, or in this case it's the out. Do exactly the same thing. Very 
we go. So they're really quite easy once you get the hang of it. They're really small, but they they're more, they're not as intimidating. They're not as difficult as as they look like they would be. See, I've already done that one. And then we'll do the ground, which is going to be the last one here. There you go. You can see. This one will probably be the easiest. The solder kind of jumps to the pad. It want, doesn't want to go anywhere else. It wants to go there. So, and there you have it. One single NeoPixel has been soldered. Like so. And now you just need to do the other ones exactly the same way. Make sure your wires are long enough. And you'll be ready to go.